Hi guys and welcome back to our FIFA 21 Sunderland Road to Glory career mode. Now in the last episode, I'm not going to lie, we had an absolute stinker. We just couldn't win. We drew 1-0 with Fleetwood, drew 1-0 with Portsmouth and then to be fair, Lincoln battered us. Again, we played really poorly but we got away with an absolutely last second and I mean last second uh, equaliser from Ricky J. Jones. And don't get me wrong, it was a beauty of a goal, a beauty of a finish but... It, uh, it, it still doesn't uh, get us away from the fact that we played terribly all episode. We're still top of the league, but the reason I say it's a bad time to come into a bad run of form is because our games in this episode are all teams that are currently in the playoffs. So we are going to be taking on Oxford in the first game of the episode, but then in the next month we do have Ipswich and MK Dons. And if I remember correctly, that's third, fourth and fifth all in one episode. So the way we are going to work this one, because they are really important games, we're going to play the Oxford one, because I think Oxford are third, and I actually think that Oxford just beat Hull, and that's where Hull dropped points last time. I think, anyway, if I remember correctly. So we play Oxford, and then what I'm going to do with the next two games, I'm going to watch them both. So um, so we're not going to be quick simming anything in this episode, and I'll, we'll watch them, and of course, if we have to jump in, we will do, which will make it a little bit more exciting. So that is how this episode is going to go, and there is the league table, as you can see, Oxford in third, MK Dons in fourth, and Ipswich in fifth, so these teams, particularly Oxford, they, they, with a win, and if Hull slip up, which they haven't been too often this season, they could easily find themselves in second place, so it's a bigger game for Oxford more so, but uh, MK Doms and Ipswich are going to be wanting to solidify their place in the playoff places with Portsmouth in sixth as well. So this is the lineup we're going to go with against Oxford. We of course have to contest with the injury of Max Power and we also have a handful of international players who have gone out on duty as well. We have Will Grigg who's been called up which is really good for him but it obviously makes it a little bit more difficult for us. We also have, uh, I'll have a quick check, I think Dembele has been called up as well. We'll have a quick look here. Yes, we have Dembele who's been called up. Smith as well, who to be fair has only been back up to Denver Hume. But even so, we're losing options here. So hopefully this international uh, duty doesn't uh, last too long. But this is the lineup I'm going to go with. We have Burge, Hume, Wright, Willis, O'Neill, O'Brien, Dobson, Bryce, Gooch, and then French. And the hero of last episode, Jones, will be starting up top as well. Let's get into it. And here we are. It is a beautiful day here at the Stadium of Light as we welcome Oxford who, as I mentioned, they're in third place. They've recently beaten Hull. I think, anyway, like I say, I'm not too sure, but it did come up, there was a headline saying Oxford beat rivals. Uh, and I think I saw Hull's name in there, but again, I could be wrong. Uh, but this is a massive one for us, absolutely massive. As I've mentioned, last episode, we really hit a bad, bad run of form. And if we have another episode with a bad run of form, we could be slipping away. I mean, we're fortunate enough that we have put enough points on the board to potentially keep us in that top two, but I, I don't really want to risk it by uh, dropping too many more points. Go on, make your run, make your run, Gooch, make your run. There we go, it is Lyndon Gooch. Can he get it across goal? He does, can he get there first? And it's been taken away from Ricky J. Jones just about. And as you can see here, our home record, we are unbeaten, which I didn't realise. I know we've only lost two games, maybe three this season, but I didn't realise we're unbeaten at home. But now here's a chance for French. Really good opportunity there with the header at the near post, but it's gone over the bar. Oh, this is a good chance now for... Oh, thank God. No way, no way is that a penalty. Oh, my God, no, that was so late. Oh, my God, I did not mean to do that. What a terrible start, and is that, what, the fifth, sixth penalty we've conceded this season? Oh, Willis, I was keeping hold of B to just kind of hold on to him. I didn't think he'd lunge in like that. They don't usually do it unless you tap B once. But he's gone in for him. He's gone in late. Come on, miss. Come on, Burge. Bottom right. Bottom right. And he's hit it over the bar. What is it with this AI and penalties? They just cannot seem to put it in the back of the net. I think we've conceded five penalties this season. And I think they've only scored one. What on earth was that? I'm not complaining. That is a massive, massive let off. Go on, O'Brien. On your back. On your back. On your back. Is he offside? I think he is. He's going to be offside, isn't he? Oh, no, he's not. He's not offside. Play into your man. It is Dobson with a big touch here. Pulls it back across goal if he can. And it's always too close to the keeper. When you get down to the byline and put it across goal, it, it just seems to aim for the keeper. I don't know why, but it's really, really annoying. Well in. That's a better challenge, Willis. Now it's Bright. Knocks on for Dobson, who's breaking forward. Try and find Ricky J. Jones. Can he get there first? Can he get in behind? He can't. Couple of nearly moments already in this game. 
Try and send Ricky J. Jones down the right side. Get there first, son. Get there first. Go on, son. Keep going. Keep going. Help him out. He's French in there. Yes, he is. Think it goes. Go. Can he get there? He can. And French is header. It just seems to skim his head. He do not get any real directness or power behind it. Oh, I can't believe that. Oh, he might have been put off a little bit by the defender. Oh, this is really good football, though, now for Oxford. Hold him, hold him up. Well played, right? That's it. No, oh, God, no. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Jesus Christ. Big touch again. Well played, Dobson. Can he get it in? Oh, there's no one there. Oh, it has been headed. Gooch arriving late over the bar. Come on. See the shots taken in the top corner. We've had three. They've had two. It's been so tight so far. Real end to end stuff here. Now it's done there by Lyndon Gooch, our little magician. Can he flick it on now? Ricky J. Jones to Bright. Strikes it and it's a save. And it's going to go out for a corner, I think. Yes. Yes, it has. I'm getting really excited now. I'm getting overly excited. French should take the corner. Can we get a goal just before half time? It's heading towards Bailey Wright and it's cleared away. Can we get another delivery in now? Back out to French on his better left foot. Get it in. It's a decent one, but no one's making the run across the near post. And what is the keeper doing there? Went straight to him. And there goes the half-time whistle. Again, it's been really end-to-end -end stuff. I think we probably just about deserve to be in front. But we need to be a bit more ruthless in front of goal. And I'm definitely a bit guilty of trying to walk it into the back of the net. There's been a good two or three chances there. Where I should have just gone for goal. But I've tried to sweat it. And it's not come off. And it's my own fault. So I need to be a bit more ruthless. And just go for goal a bit earlier. Oh, no. It's a good chance now. Oh, I don't know why I didn't carry on going there. It was clean through on goal, but he's chipped it backwards. Got over to him. No foul, please. Oh, thank God. No foul. I think it would have been a free kick anyway, but even so, we don't half dive into challenges, do we? But down the line, neatly done for Luke O'Neill. Bombing forward. Can he cut inside, maybe? Keep going. Help him out. Try and find Ricky J. Jones. Is he onside? And he has been deemed to have been offside. Come on. They're taking the mick out of his ear, Oxford. They've had possession for literally the last sort of five, ten minutes here, but we finally nick it off him. They take the make, they just hold on to it for so long. But here's Willis absolutely bombing down the middle. Keep going, son, all the way, lad. All the way. Keep going, help him out. I will try and sweat it. Dink across goal. Can anyone get there? We can. Is it going to go in? It's not. What a run that is from Willis. Oh, and it wasn't a clean contact from Ricky J. Jones. I thought the defender had it. It may have come off the defender, actually, but the keeper's made a good save. An unorthodox one at that. Oh no, it's been flipped on here. It is on side. It's a great chance. Don't pull him down and send it straight to the keeper. Jesus Christ, Burge. He's nearly powered it over his head and into his own net. Get over to him. It's a good chance again. Please don't take him out. And it's a save at the near post by Burge. Please no. Oh, Jesus Christ. I thought he was going to give it away there. Maguire has come on for the final 10 minutes to replace Frenchy. Just try and give Jones that little bit more creativity in behind him. But we might not even need Maguire at the minute. We need more defensive reinforcements because it's all Oxford. Final few moments. Now here is Bryce. Help him out. It is Chris Maguire now. Come on, help him out. Try and find Gooch one more time. There we go. Oh, the pass isn't good enough. It's a big touch from O'Neill. And the chance is gone, you would think. It's still all Oxford. I'd probably take a draw at this point. I don't think we deserve a draw. I think we deserve the win, if anything. But just weather the storm, lads. Weather the storm. Good chance. Big space in the box for them. Don't let them turn you. Don't let them turn you. Get over to it. What a challenge that is. And what an interception from Bailey Wright. I think that just saved us there. And there goes the full-time whistle. Nil-nil. Not the worst result in the world. It was really hard for Very much an end-to-end -end game. But I'll, I'll probably take a point considering the opposition. That's still four games without a win for us. And after that game, we get another notification about a player that has apparently completed their development. Jordan Willis, only 26 years of age. And uh, it, it can no longer improve. Because if we look, regardless of what uh, sort of course we set them on, it says, you know, 151 weeks there, 158 weeks there. Nothing is going to improve. He will only naturally improve now. There's no training we can give him that is going to improve him at all. Again, at least this is the kind of uh, idea I'm getting from what, from what it's telling me. It looks like he's now forever going to be a 70 rated defender. And he's only 26. In real life, that's like your prime. And he can't improve anymore, pretty much, unless it is naturally. Because there are a couple of players, like Bailey Wright, even though he's 29, I think he has naturally gone up just by one. Um, so I think they can, regardless of the age, they can go up a little bit, but he can't train them anymore to, to try and influence that. Because it's just stupid. But if we look at the league table now, Hull are on 88 points, we're on 93. 
How did they do in their last game then? Have they dropped points? They lost. They lost to Peterborough. So thankfully for us, we might be playing terribly, but Hull aren't doing so good either. It's it's mad, isn't it, that every time we drop points, Hull seems to do exactly the same. But so we're still five points clear. It looks like we're promoted at this point. There's only five games left of the season. So uh, it just depends whether we're going to go up as champions or not. That's literally the case, which I'm happy with. So it's probably the best thing that we're going through this patch now, right at the end of the season. But that is, like I said earlier, four games without a win, which is just ridiculous. But now we are going to be taking on Ipswich, who, as you can see, are fifth in the table. But it is quite close between seventh and fourth, really. There's only three points separating them, four points, sorry, separating Peterborough and MK Dons, who we also play in this episode. But uh, it's going to be really, really tight. I don't think Crew really have a say in it unless literally Portsmouth, Ipswich and MK Dons lose all the rest of the games and Crew win the rest. I don't think they really have a shout in it. But between 7th onwards, it looks like one team are going to be really heartbroken at the end of this season. But like I say, we're going to be watching this game against Ipswich away from home. So this is the team that we're going to go with. The international break is thankfully over. So we have the likes of Grigg back, Dembele back as well. So we have Burge, Hume, Wright, Willis, O'Neill, and Dembele on the right-hand side this time because he was really, really good there in the last episode. And he caused so many problems with his pace on that right. We have O'Brien on the left, Dobson and Scowen in the middle with Jones up top alongside Grigg today. And uh, Frenchie is going to drop to the bench. And away we go. Come on, lads. Let's get back to winning ways. Even if it means I'm just sitting back. Oh, sorry, I'm sitting back and watching and don't really have any involvement at all. That'd be quite nice. But straight away, they have a chance. I can't believe that. I cannot believe that. Straight from the kickoff, they've walked straight through our side and banged it past Burge. Our look has just been god-awful. Do you know what I've noticed, which is really, really frustrating with the watching games? What they constantly do, and to be fair, both sides do it, they play it around the back a little bit, get it into the middle, and then they just try that Hollywood pass out wide. A little bit like that one, which didn't come off rip switch, but it either does that, they either lose it, or it goes miles out of play, and they do it constantly when there's no options, they just hoof it out of play. And it looks very, very stupid, but now here's Denver Hume linking up neatly. Come on, let's get a chance here, let's get a chance, and it's been cut out. Oh, that's a good ball there. Come on, break forward, break forward. Play him in, have a crack and shoot. Shoot, surely gets in. It's 1-1 and it's Aidan O'Brien who gets it. Jesus Christ, the relief. The relief. Come on, let's get in front now, lads. Let's get in front. Defend properly, lads. Please defend properly. It's the number 44. Gets it in. It's a save from Burge. Are we going to get it away? No, we've given it straight back to them. Oh, this is ridiculous. Just let me be happy, FIFA, please. Well, it is half-time, it's 1-1, and as you can see, they've had plenty more possession. They've only had a couple of shots, as we've only had the one. But I'll leave it a good uh, half an hour or so. I'll leave it a bit more time, um, because I don't think we're playing too badly. When we are going forward, we look quite dangerous. But we'll see how it goes anyway. We'll jump in if we need to. Great ball that wide for Aidan O'Brien. But this is where we start to mess around with it. Well, so ball in, headed away. Come get it back in. No, we can't. Then Belly tries to flick it inside and it's been intercepted. Oh, God, no. Here we go. Here we go again. It's going to happen, in it? I can feel it. Across goal. It's been headed. It's gone just wide. Oh, my God. Over the top now for Den Belly to chase. See, that's what I mean. They always go backwards to get to the wings and just play it backwards. And that was a class chance that for Den Belly to run at him. But now, here we go. Break it forward. Help him out. Help him out. Surely, finish it quick, it's in, it's 2-1, get in son, he's back from international duty and he is back with a bang, get in lad, hold on to it lads, please just hold on to it, do not mess this one up, flick it on, that's lovely stuff, it's Denver Hume, get it across goal, please, it's going to turn back, go on, anybody, shoot, finish, oh and it's been blocked, oh that would have been it, that would have sealed the game off. Just get the ball in the box, man. Or do a bit of time wasting. That's lovely football, but someone is offside. Go on, blow the whistle, ref. Blow the whistle. Get in. There we go. We've had to come back from a goal behind. I had nothing to do with it, but we do have another three points on the board. Get in. But now we do have some more players coming out of our uh, scout reports. Uh, the Argentina report is first. Is there anyone here who looks half decent? I'll have a look around. No, there's no one of note, really. They're all pretty poor. This time around, but we'll have a look at the uh, the England scout report. See if there's anyone here who, uh, to be fair, even though he has less judgment, he's only got two star judgment. He's actually brought back probably a better amount of players. Uh, so we'll have a look around. Oh, there's this lad here, Albert Clifford, who is currently rated between 56 and 68. He has a potential between 73 and 89. Plays on the right wing. Uh, he's only five foot five. It's so probably pretty weak, but he's worth 550k. But as I've said. 
as a way to get a bit more income, particularly whilst we're in the lower leagues and we don't give it, get given sorry a massive amount. There are a couple of youngsters that I, I'm quite happy just bring them in just to sell them off to make us money. You know, because if he's a winger and you know we're not going to get to a massive amount and he doesn't have much like acceleration or sprint speed when that's what you really want in a winger, I don't mind just selling him off. But yeah, there's no one else within that batch of players. But we will have a look at that uh, that lad, uh, Clifford, I think it was, and uh, see how he's looking in the youth squad. So here is Clifford, to be fair, 17 years of age. He could play on the right wing or as a left midfielder. He's rated 60, 78 acceleration, sprint speed 77 as well. So that actually isn't too bad for a 17 year old. So I'll train him up a little bit in the in the background and uh, I'll also probably end up sending him out on loan maybe next season. So I quite like the look of him, to be honest with you. I do quite like the look of him, but we'll see anyway. We still also, of course, have Enrique Mora from the last episode. He's nearly finished his... Uh, or, or sorry, nearly got to the, his next rating, which is, of course, 60. Five-star skill moves for him as well, and a four-star weak foot. I really, really like that. And we also have this keeper here, George Andrews, who has improved by one since being in there. He does have a potential between 74 and 88. Six foot four as well, so he's maybe just someone we can have in the background as well. He's not great, might end up selling him off, but it's decent to have there anyway. Now, we do have an offer here for Jack Diamond from a team I have never heard of in my life. WSG Tyrol, Tyrol. No idea at all. It's a loan deal with an option to buy. I think I will just have a look at it and uh, probably agree some kind of pre-contract agreement with them. He is 21, 56. We could probably improve him, you know, at most to maybe mid-60s, maybe 70 out of push. But by the time we get to that with Jack Diamond, we'll more than likely be in the Premier League by that point, or at least I would hope so. Um, and I just don't think he's really going to help us as much as we would probably like. So we'll have a look at it. We'll negotiate and see what they say. Okay, so we want a one-year loan. I'll accept that. That's fine. The wage split, let's have a look at that. 60-40, uh, which they'll pay. I'm pretty much fine with that because Diamond's not exactly earning a massive amount anyway. And he wants to offer 290000 for him. He is worth 300000 I might counter just to get a tiny bit more. Nothing massive. Uh, maybe 350 I'd be quite happy with that for Jack Diamond. He might stick to 290 though. Oh no, he's happy with it. 350k for Jack Diamond at the end of that loan. But again, it'll be interesting to see how these loans work. Uh, maybe that they might pull out and say they don't actually want to buy him at the end. Or can we pull out ourselves? I don't know. Uh, we'll have to see how that works exactly. And immediately, the talks have broken down between Jack Diamond and WSG Tyrol, or whatever the hell they're called. None of our youngsters want to go out on loan. They think that they're going to be starting here week in, week out. I think there's going to be a real sort of uh, mix around in this squad when we do go up um, to the championship because these youngsters are just pissing me off. It would have been so much more realistic if they just allowed me to send them out on loan, but instead they're rejecting it everywhere, left, right and centre. But now we are going to be going to the game against MK Dons. It's another side in the playoff places. And as I mentioned before, we're not going to be quick simming in this episode because it is a big game, but we will be watching it. So this is the lineup we're going to go with against MK Dons. We have Birdshume, Collins starting today ahead of Bailey Wright, Willis as well, O'Neill, Dembele, Dobson, Scowen, Gooch with French and Grig up top. Let's get into it. And away we go at the stage of light. Will Grigg does kick us off. It's another big game. Can we get another three points where I can just sit back Relax, chill out and watch us bang a few goals in. Or will it be a bit more dramatic than that? It usually is when we're watching games, as we've seen previously. I'm just awaiting MK Dons to score in the next few seconds. Oh, no, it's a good chance. But what a challenge that is from Collins, I think that was, the youngster. Who, of course, we also have an, uh, have an uh, sorry, loan to buy deal. And that's a great ball for Denver Hume. He is on side. Pull it back now. Get it in, get it in, get it in. Finish. Get in. No. Oh, I thought it was in. I think it's it into the side net, and it's so hard to tell sometimes with watching this game what goes in and what doesn't, because sometimes it looks like it's gone in, but it's gone over, or it's hit the side net, and like we're sitting there, but that's a good chance. Good interception from Collins, and we're going to get it away. Oh, it's a good chance for them. Come on, come on, come on, get the block on, get the block on. Surely there's so many bodies in there. Straight at Burge, you're starting to rack up the shot count now. MK Dons. Dobson, turn, help him. Back to Dobson again. He's trying to wriggle some room. He's hit it. What a goal that is. It looks daft and sounds daft for me to say that it's a really good goal. It's a class goal because we're watching these little dots run around. But you can just see how it bent and went in off the post. Get in, Frenchie. And there goes the half-time whistle. It's currently 1-0. I'm actually going to jump in, I think, in, uh, in about 15 minutes, even if we're winning because I just kind of want to play a little bit now. But we'll continue. Hopefully we don't concede before I get on because then at least I can claim that I've added something to the game. To get us three points. If we do get three points, of course. I am going to jump in now. 
Well, we're in the middle of an attack. I'm not too sure what's going on, but here we go. It is Dobson. Tries to find Frenchie. Can he get there first? He can. It's in. Our first touch. We've literally just jumped in to give it to French to bang it into that right-hand side of the goal. Get in. Now I can say that he had a part of this win. Now I can say it. <laughs> literally the first shot we've had, or the second touch we've had since jumping in. And we've banged it in within probably 10 seconds since I have jumped in. Get in. I've just said jumped in so many times. But that is 17 goals for Frenchie. He's been class this season. Him and Grig in particular up top have been class. Of course, we brought in Ricky J. Jones in January. He's been really, really good as well. But throughout the season, Grig and Frenchie have gave us so many goals between them. Collins now to Dobson. Neatly done, can he? Switch the play. Yes, he can for Luke Conine, who's driving down this right side. I can see Frenchie making some kind of movement. Can he get there? He can't. And what the hell? Come on. He's just tapped it straight back to his keeper. The ball it straight back to him and he's caught it. Cheating. Get it away. Get it away. Get it away. Come on. Get into him. It's a good chance. And it's struck straight down the throat of Lee Burge. A guard now. Good chance. It's Morris. Can he play it back to him? I thought he was going to. He's going to strike it. And it's in. I thought it was offside. But it's 2-1. Thankfully, we did get that goal when we first jumped in. So otherwise, that would have been a nightmare. It's good football. I tried to play him offside. Oh, it's Hume. Why didn't Hume just let the guy go? Why is he stood by the frigging byline, man? That's ridiculous defending from Denver Hume to keep him on side. Time is running out for MK Dogs. What is that headed from Dobson? I definitely didn't head it backwards that way, but he has done. Good chance for him. They're piling forward now. Please, no. Please get into him. Well played. Well in, well in. Saving the day there. Blow the whistle, ref. There we go. We end the episode with a win, 2-1. It was hard fought, but we get there in the end, thank God. So this is how the league table looks at the end of the episode. As you can see, we're on 99 points, three games remaining. So, of course, in the next episode, we will be playing those three games that are left. And hopefully, we do manage to hit triple figures for the season, which will be absolutely mad. But we have Hull in second, Oxford in third, Portsmouth fourth, Ipswich fifth, and MK Dons in sixth with Peterborough just a point outside the playoff places. Now the bottom four, we have Accrington, Doncaster, Rochdale and Swindon as well. But that'll be it guys. If you have enjoyed this episode, please hit the like button for me. It'd be massively, massively appreciated. And subscribe to the channel if you're not already to become a fully fledged member of the Sony Army. But for now, you take care and stay jabbing.